morning, welcome. I'm Eric Sierra, Business Development Manager Europe for Open EMEA. Today we're going to talk a bit more about ETAS and the open services. At the end of this webcast, we have a live Q&A, which will answer any related questions. There is a Q&A button on your screen where you can click on to add any related questions on this topic. First of all, we will start with showing you some solutions and which scenarios our ETOS can be used. Welcome back, I hope you enjoyed the videos with the different scenarios. This is Joey, my colleague, field application engineer. Uh, Joey, maybe you can do the, the rest of the introduction? Sure, Eric, thank you. Well, I'm Joey van der Hoge. I'm one of the field application engineers uh, for AOPEN Europe. Um, the movie that you saw just a moment ago was uh, our ETAL and all kinds of different scenarios. And for all kinds of specific scenarios, we can deliver all kinds of different services. And I think that's one of the main topics that we're going to talk about today. Correct. And I think we're also going to introduce uh, the new Etel X, a very nice product uh, made uh, especially with some feedback of the, in the market. So indeed, uh, Joey, you, you mentioned uh, about the Etel X, which is a new product we uh, launched, a new uh, all-in-one touch display, and I think we're all very enthusiastic about it. Uh, you also mentioned something about services and um, what I would like to explain a bit is that we have different kind of services as they open. Um, I think the most used service that we have is pre-imaging, uh, which can be a, a general Windows 10 image that we have for all our systems available, or a multi-bundle image, which we can explain maybe a bit later, or uh, even customized images. Uh, but I think it's important for people to know what, what, what does it mean, a, a Windows image? Uh, can you explain a bit more? Sure. Think of the Windows image as a uh, pre-configured OS that we make to a certain level of reliability. Uh, and we make a snapshot out of it when it's uh, passing all our criteria. And could also be custom wishes from the customer if they mm -hmm. want something specific in it. Um, and as soon as we validate the, that the image is okay and the customer agrees with it, we make a snapshot of that image and that one is going to be used for production. And uh, it can also be a uh, image that the customer creates and for both ways we can pre-image it and I think that we also do custom part or something like that but I think you can talk more about that part. Yeah I, I agree uh, and indeed if we have uh, we use images we have our, our standard lineup of images but for customers that use a customer specific image we create a, a customized part number which means that that's including the hardware and the customization of the hardware as well the image and every image gets a unique image part number as well. Uh, so which means, and that's I think a big advantage for customers, that we can secure that they get the specific build they requested always on the same way, with the same image, with the same components, which is, uh, is very good I think for the consistency of, yeah. of a project and a rollout, specifically if it's over a longer period. And does that, does that also mean that if I would order my part number in America, I can get the same configuration as I would order it in Europe? 
Indeed. Uh, okay. In that case, the part number is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so uh, it wouldn't make any difference, and, mm -hmm. and people are sure that they get the, the same system with the same rollout. Okay. Um, I think an, another big advantage, and I think that's a very important to mention as well, is that if, if you would have that customized part number, it's also helping for from service point of view that, that you guys provide. Uh, for example, if something goes wrong in the field, uh, the, the field application engineers can, can, based on that part number, exactly say, okay, this system is used, this kind of image is used, and they can, uh, yeah, if we have the image, can immediately start testing. Uh, we don't need to set up an FTP server or get the image from the customer. So I think that helps you, you guys as well. Yeah, correct. For sure. Yeah. Um, and on the other hand, on RMA part as well, uh, it's it's easier for us uh, because if someone sends back the system, uh, they get the exact same build back yeah. uh, as we delivered it before. Uh, what about um, an example? Where, in what kind of uh, scenarios do we offer this kind of service most? I, I think we have some different scenarios like transportation or corporate or, or retail. Uh, a recent scenario that I, can, I have on top of my mind is that for a retail project, uh, we delivered the, the pre-imaging service uh, based on a customized image, which means that the customer had that specific part number. Uh, I think as well, what, what is, was important there as well, that we deliver a customized bias to that customer. Mm -hmm. And not, not only specifically because that means that the system starts up with a picture or, or a, yeah. a, a logo from that end user, uh, because that's, that's minor. But yeah. the main reason for this was security, uh, because due to use, uh, using a customized BIOS, we can adjust certain settings that... Um, yeah, I, think, I think I remember this project. You are referring to the pen test, for yeah, example? Indeed, the yeah. pen testing. Um, Maybe so, yeah, you, yeah, you can explain a bit more even. Yeah, so pen testing is, uh, is a test to, to test the security level of a device on a hardware level. And the request on that project, that project was that we couldn't, for example, plug any USB device in because they were very afraid that something would happen with the system if something was put into the USB slots. And we made a specific bias to lock out all the features that there were uh, concerning and we passed the pen test. And it's also important in banking, for example. Indeed, for, for banking, you see this a lot of finance or big corporates or big retailers. These are very important things and, and values that we can bring to our customers to support them on, on bigger projects like in, in, in retail in this case. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I remember a big project, and it was I think transportation. We did a, we did the customers buys with that, but I remember that we also did a lot more on customization level. Can you maybe yeah. talk about that? Yeah, it was a highly customized project indeed um, uh, for transportation market, which we uh, were all at once were used as well. Um, customized buys was for sure one of them. Uh, I think was for, was very important for the customers that it was the, the connectivity. Uh, with the 4G network. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, so in this case, we, we certified or the customer certified a 4G module uh, and uh, we built it in for the customer, uh, which was a certified module by the network provider. And I think that's a very important one to make sure that on long term, you will keep your connectivity uh, as reliable as possible. Uh, and I think one of the other things that we did in customization level was that we, uh, and it was a large deployment, was a non-touch ETAL. Uh, where uh, yeah. normally our ethos are, uh, has a, are a touch display and in this case the customer uh, wanted a non-touch version. Um, so this is what we did in that case uh, to, uh, to make a, a very customized system for the customer. This project, it wasn't for one customer only, right? Or, or one product, it was for multiple systems? No, it was a, a quite large project yeah. uh, in, indeed and for those kind of large projects uh, we, we were able to, to, to provide a certain level of customization. Mm. Uh, however, this is not something we do on, on sm smaller projects or, or smaller cases because it's uh, quite intensive. Yeah. Um, however, we can on, on large scale, we can uh, for sure do uh, certain things of customization to support our customer and, uh, and also support the end customer needs. Okay, cool. How about warranty, Eric? I think uh, we also offer some extended warranty for some customers or for some occasions. Yeah, th that's correct. Uh, we have uh, uh, certain warranty services, which means eventually that we have a standard warranty of two years and uh, people can extend their warranty uh, by purchasing it. Um, so standard is two years and they can add up to three years to have a total warranty on the system for five years. Um, this warranty is purchased at the moment they they uh, purchase the, the goods as well, so it's not something that you can add on later on. 
Um, and we provide this more and more to customers. And I think this has to do with the, the thing that there is an investment uh, made in a certain company. And over a certain time of period, they want to have some guarantee that the system works or there's a certain service provided. So we see the last years more and more that uh, since the financial services are more uh, went to the market to provide a, a total service solution to uh, end users, also the warranties uh, are used more yeah. uh, than in the past. So Joey, I think we discussed uh, enough about our services, which, which we have of course and a lot more than, than we discussed. Um, maybe it's time now to show a bit more about uh, the ETA X on, on technical level. Can you, can yeah, you may help sure. us with that? Sure. I think we can dive straight into the device itself. I think it's interesting to open it up. We've seen sure. that the last time when Arco did something similar. That was uh, interesting for some people. If you don't like it and you're watching this on demand, just skip five minutes. The technical stuff is boring for you. But I think it's interesting to see what we do to build, increase our build quality and ensure the proper reliability and operating. So if you come closer, then uh, we'll, we'll check it. Okay, Joey now is, uh, is going to open, him, open it up. So uh, I don't think it will take too long. It's only yeah. a few screws. Eric, at the moment, we have, I think we have quite a few different uh, all-in-one systems. Maybe you can tell a bit more about that. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so, so in general, we have the, the ETA range, which we already had uh, a few years, and now we launched the ETA X. Um, I think from, if, we, if we look at from ETA point of view, we have uh, three different sizes of screens, so 15 inch, 19 inch, and 22 inch, which we have in, uh, let's say, a fanless and a non-fanless version. So the, the fanless version is based on a, a Betrio or Celeron CPU, which is comparable with the CPU used in the new launched ETA X. Um, or we have a, a non-valence model which is based on an i3 or i5 CPU, so for much more high-end performance, but however non-valence. Uh, the general thing in all the e-tiles is that they uh, have uh, rich I.O. ports, so a lot of different uh, I.O. ports to connect for connectivity, like the RG50 for uh, receipt printers or cache drawers or whatsoever. And I think also that's one of the main differences that we mentioned on the e -tile. X, mm -hmm. uh, where the ETA X is only available at this moment in 15 and 19 inch model and both are uh, on the Celeron based or Betrail uh, based CPU, so more entry level and not available in i3 or i5 performance. This is the inside of the new ETA X. As you can see, it's completely fanless. It has a real big cooling rip over here and it will dissipate the seat uh, to the back of the uh, ETL X. There's a lot of louvers inside in the, in the back to uh, dissipate the heat. We have some uh, expansion slots. Um, if you are looking closely, you see maybe something strange happening over here. Um, the reason that, that, that we're using a converter card for the Wi-Fi is because uh, the old AMSATA uh, Wi-Fi cards are a bit outdated and we are now using M.2. Um, so this device is prepared for the future and we have a converter kit with it so that it can use the new type of Wi-Fi cards. Uh, furthermore, what, do we, uh, what else do we see? We see the storage and it has a lot of room in here for project-based uh, requests. Think of uh, an extra hard drive, maybe some extra I.O. stuff like that. All possible with MOQ involved, of course. Um, can you tell maybe a bit more on, on the different I, difference on I.O. level with I.O. ports comparing a normal ETA? Yeah. In the device itself, uh, we have a, a different kind of I.O.s than uh, this, the regular ETA. Uh, it has a bit less, but it still has a very rich I.O. It has, of course, the DC jack. It has four times USB 2.0, an HDMI output, an RJ45 LAN port, um, an audio in and audio out, and of course, RS-232 COM port. I think I'm going to put it back together and then uh, we can talk a bit more about the device. So, the uh, main difference is then from the ETA X comparing to the normal ETA is that the ETA X is a bit thicker. Uh, yeah. The normal ETA is 33 millimeters, ETA yeah. X is about 40, 40 millimeters. Uh, on the other hand, it's easier to open because you only need a few screws to open yep. it. So from service point of view, it's, it's uh, a bit maybe better. Um, as well, there, it has uh, uh, some difference in I.O. ports than uh, the normal e -tile. So I think it doesn't have the RG50. Uh, however, the question is, when do you need this uh, in, in a project? 
uh, as well um, a camera and a, a speakers are not included in this case. Correct. However, again, depending on the project need, you will need it or not. So that's the differentiation between the two, the ETAL, normal ETAL and yep. ETAL X. So uh, from your point of view, where would you position the ETA X from performance point of view compared to the normal ETAL? Good question. Uh, performance point of view is comparable to say a D3250. If you really like that product uh, and you, need, you have the need for one-on-one -on -one touch display, this could be a very good option. It, has, it shares the same chipset, so again with imaging that we talked about in the mm -hmm. beginning, uh, there's a good chance that that image will work on this device. Okay, so so if, if you have yeah knowledge and are familiar with our D3250, mm -hmm. you can say it's it's similar. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is the difference that you need probably some touch drivers or whatever uh, Could be. from yeah. an image point of view. Yeah. Um, I think we addressed the topic on, on multi bundled images as well, um, and maybe this is a good good way to uh, tell a bit more on that part as well. Yeah. Because in the multi bundled images we have, that, which means it's a general open image, including some software from a third party. Correct. Which is already uh, a let's say pre-installed and uh, after the first windows initialization you can make a selection um, and also therefore you uh, then can easily select it click it and it will pre-install the application and yep. also for eta x it's it's usable then at that, yep. uh, that moment correct and we uh, already prepared that kind of image for uh, the ETL-X also okay. so i would suggest to people that if you have any questions about imaging pre-imaging multi-bundle or normal images then just reach out to your sales contact, and uh, which can support you in any questions, and maybe even if necessary, can bring you in contact with uh, guys like uh, Joey, field application engineers, to support you. So I think we're uh, uh, about to the end of this this webcast. Um, uh, we discussed today about uh, the, the the services we can provide as we open towards our partners. Um, as well, we discussed the launch of our new product, the ETA X, and the difference between the ETA X and the, the normal ETA we have. Um, I think in, uh, in general we uh, uh, want to thank you all for uh, joining this webcast and um, thank uh, Joey for, uh, for supporting us uh, in this case. Um, for now we're going to end and there will be a live Q&A. Uh, for any questions related to, to things we discussed today, please reach out to our salespersons uh, responsible for the specific regions or send an email to request at aopen.com. And for the rest, we will start with the live Q&A now. Thank you for joining.